Sitting on a bend of the River Avon, Warwick Castle dominates the landscape around. It is a formidable and beautiful castle, with its huge towers and intimidating walls striking fear into the hearts of the people of medieval England. Castles initially were built to force people into submission, but over the years they became sites of great wealth and grandeur, but also sites where local barons would enforce their rules. England has many brilliant castles, from the Tower of London and its incredible history of execution, torture and imprisonment, to other sites which are now ruined, for example Scarborough Castle, which was partially destroyed during the English Civil War. But one castle today to visit with a great amount to see, which is shrouded in immense history is Warwick Castle. Welcome to Learn With Me. Join us today as we look at Warwick Castle, and show you around, and consider if it's one of the most intimidating castles in England. To support our channel, as always, please make sure to subscribe. A fortified settlement existed on the site of Warwick Castle in the 10th century, with Ethelflaed, the daughter of Alfred the Great, creating a burr on it. It was used as a site to defend Mercia against the Danes, and it held a strong position next to the River Avon, near to the Fosse Way. But following the Norman Conquest, William the Conqueror realised how important the area was, and he created a Motten Bailey Castle on the site. Houses were ripped down to make way for this, and today the Motten Bailey Castle site can still be seen inside the inner bailey of the castle, and it offers brilliant views of the surrounding area. William appointed Henry de Beaumont as the first constable of Warwick Castle, he then became the first Earl of Warwick. He created a church within the walls, and then his ancestors would continue to expand. During Henry II's reign, the Motten Bailey was replaced with a stone keep castle, as technology got better, and the new castle featured a large curtain wall for protection. Traditionally, the Earls of Warwick could stay loyal to the monarchy, but as they were powerful and wealthy, they could be considered dangerous for the king and his queen. The castle was first taken in 1264, after Simon de Montfort, the 6th Earl of Leicester, captured it. Part of the war was then destroyed to prevent it being used as a power for the king. The Earl of Warwick in this was then held for ransom after his capture, and following his death, the Beecham family owned the castle for seven generations. In 1312, Pierce Gaveston, the 1st Earl of Cornwall, and favourite of Edward II, was held a prisoner inside of Warwick. He was rumoured to have been the king's lover, but Gaveston was then quickly taken out to nearby Kenilworth in a forest, and for angering the barons, who was brutally executed. The Earl of Warwick then refused to have his body on his land, as he was so disgusted by him. Further expansion at Warwick Castle took place, as a gatehouse and barbican were created, along with two huge towers known as Caesar's Tower and Guy's Tower. Then the Watergate Tower was added, and with this they stood tall above the local town. Caesar's Tower in particular has a grim dungeon, which was incredibly feared, and it was said that prisoners from the 100 Years War of the 14th century were so scared of ending up inside of the dungeon at Warwick that information got back to the continent about it. The long line of the Beecham Isles ended when Richard Neville, who was also referred to as Warwick Kingmaker, became the Earl of Warwick through his wife's inheritance of the title. Neville was considered the most powerful man inside of medieval England and was referred to as a true power behind the throne. Neville would even imprison the king, Edward IV, inside of Warwick, and he tried to rule in his name. During the Wars of the Roses, whoever he supported, it was said, would be king, and he even managed to dethrone Edward IV after turning on him in favour of his enemy, Henry VI. However, the kingmaker was killed at the Battle of Barnet, fighting against Edward IV during the Wars of the Roses. The castle passed to George Plantagenet, who was also seen as a turncoat, and was later executed inside the Tower of London, by his brother Edward, and was drowned in a barrel of wine. As technology changed, the castle was upgraded, and a member of staff known as the Keeper of the Artillery was created, to make sure that the castle's gunpowder stores were sufficient. It was said of the castle in the Tudor times that, the dungeon now in Ruith standed in the west-northwest part of the castle. There is also a tower west-northwest, and through it a postern gate of iron. All the principal lodgings of the castle with the hall and chapel lie on the south side, and here the king doth much cost in making foundations in the rocks to sustain that side of the castle, for great pieces fell out of the rocks that sustain it. Further expansion occurred and strengthening as the crown owned it, but during the reign of Elizabeth I, the castle did fall into a state of decay, despite the fact the queen actually did visit. A wooden building was created for the queen to stay in, but during the 17th century the Greville family owned Warwick. It even had a role in the gunpowder plot, as the plotters stole horses from the stables there to help their escape. 
It was embassaged during the English Civil War as it was held by parliamentarians, and it was said our endeavours for taking it were of little purpose, for we only had two small pieces of cannon, which were brought from Compton House, belonging to the Earl of Northampton, and those were drawn up to the top of the church steeple, and were discharged at the castle, to which they could do no hurt, but only frightened them within the castle, who shot into the street and killed several of our men. The siege was later lifted, and later prisoners were held inside the castle's towers again. Further improvements occurred at the castle, and instead of becoming a traditional site of a castle, it transitioned to become more of a stately home, where the wealthy would congregate with the Earls of Warwick for lavish parties. Future kings would visit and escape the city for the weekend, and would be entertained, but then with the advent of tourism, the castle became one of the most visited sites across England, with even foreign visitors coming to see its grand history. But now let's have a look at some of the brilliant parts of Warwick Castle. The curtain wall of Warwick is colossal and huge in its size, and it offered a great deal of protection to the castle. But also it was a clear message to attackers to stay out, and think twice about trying to storm it. Guards would patrol up and down the walls on the ramparts that link the different towers. Guy's Tower was built in the 14th century and has 12 sides and 5 storeys. Inside here were medieval toilets, rooms and bedchambers, but also guard rooms. During the Civil War, the windows in the rooms were enlarged to allow handheld cannons to be used. It was originally used to house the Earl of Warwick's guests, but it was also used as a place to house prisoners, who left graffiti inside here on the walls. The weakest and most vulnerable part of the castle was its gatehouse, and at Warwick there was a barbican which was added, which allowed extra protection. This was a walled passage that was fitted with a drawbridge which could be pulled up, and also there was a portcullis, which could be dropped to trap attackers inside a narrow passageway. This also contained murder holes, and from here stones and human waste and boiling substances would be poured down on them, along with arrows and other weapons, and the attackers were picked off. The jail is found in the basement of Caesar's Tower, and was one of the most feared in the whole of England. It was a place which had an open drain running through it, but also had an oubliette. This was a dungeon which was so feared, that a prisoner would be left and simply forgotten. Prisoners inside here could not stand, and were locked in there for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week without any freedom. Guards would starve them, and they would be living with the remains of the former prisoners, but also with rats and other vermin. Inside the jail were also leg stocks and chains, where prisoners would be held in manacles. It was a horrifically savage place to find yourself imprisoned. But when you enter the state rooms today, you're met with a complete juxtaposition from the horrors of the oubliette. The Great Hall is the largest room in the castle, and is decorated with beautifully laid out weapons and arms, and the armoury at Warwick is only surpassed by that of the Tower of London. It was a place where dances would occur, and also where meals and banquets would be held, and then the entertainment would continue in the other rooms in this part of the castle, such as the Red Drawing Room. Another interesting room is the Blue Boudoir, an intimate place where Daisy Greville, the fifth Countess of Warwick, would meet with her ladies during parties, and inside of here is Marie Antoinette's silver-faced clock. My favourite room inside the castle is the State Dining Room, which was built in the 18th century, and was designed by some of the finest craftsmen in the country. The ceiling is beautiful and impressive, and on the back wall is a huge portrait of King Charles I, painted by Van Dyck's studio. Inside of this room, kings and queens have been entertained in the past, and they've also dined there, and the more lavish rooms continue upstairs, with the bedrooms of the family who owned the castle. But Warwick Castle is an incredible and beautiful castle, that has had a rich history linked to the Earls of Warwick, imprisonment and warfare. During the medieval times, it was possibly the strongest castle in the land, and was one of the most lavish, but as the centuries rolled on, there wasn't much military need for it to remain garrisoned by soldiers. But it was present in all the major conflicts that hit England since the Norman Conquest, being besieged during the English Civil War, but also a place where the King was imprisoned during the Wars of the Roses. Today, Warwick Castle is one of the most spectacular but intimidating castles across the nation. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.